And the primary cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And, he's in the, and he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages, the Negroes are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Water seen on the fire and land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the, of the modes of nature. nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pochita Kaitravotra. Paramo nimatsana namasatam. Vedyam vastavam atra vastu. Shivadam tapatra on mulanam. Shivadam bhagavate mahamuni krite. Kim vapurir ishwaraha. Sadyo hridi avuridyate tra. Krite bihi susu subis takshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam, compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity, is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpataror galitam falam. Nigama kalpataror galitam falam. Sukumakad amrita dravya samyatam. Pipata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pipata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur aho rasika bhuvi bhavu kaha. Muhur aho rasika bhuvi bhavu kaha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Shimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Shimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. 
although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hidyan Taksto Bhadrani Vidu Nati Srihitsatam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best-wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nityam Bhagavata Sivaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naistaki. In this way, the devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. Dormant transcendental. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. Knowledge. Tadarajas tamo bhavo Kamaloba dayas chayi Chaitaratari navidam Sitvam satve prasiddhati As he hears more about Krishna from uh, the Bhagavatam and from the devotees he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Evam prasana manaso Bhagavat bhakti yogataha Bhagavat tattva vijnanam muktasangasya jayate By development of devotional service to of the Lord I'm sorry, uh, by the development of devotion, sir, one becomes fixed or freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lusts and avarice are diminished. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I sort of mixed up some of this. Anyway. Yeah, when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains f steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis, chityante sarvasamsaya, chiyante jasyakarmani, drista evat manishwari, Thus bhakti yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram, understanding of the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Okay. Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 1, chapter 14, verse number 3. Kalasya cha gatim rodram vipar yastar tu dharminaha papiyasmin rinam vartam Kroda Lobanu Ritat Manam Translation by Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada He saw that the direction of eternal time had changed and this was very fearful 
there were disruptions in the seasonal regularities. The people in general had become very greedy, angry, and deceitful. And he saw that they were adopting foul means of livelihood. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. When civilization is disconnected from the loving relation of the Supreme Personality Godhead, symptoms like the changes of seasonal regulations, foul means of livelihood, greed, anger, and fraudulence become rampant. The change of seasonal regulations refers to one season's atmosphere becoming manifest in another season. For example, the rainy seasons being transferred to autumn or the fructification of fruits and flowers from one season in another season. A godless man is invariably greedy, angry, and fraudulent. Such a man can earn his livelihood by any means, black or white. During the reign of Maharaj Yudhisthira, all the above symptoms were conspicuous by their absence. But Maharaj Yudhisthira was astonished to experience even a slight change in the godly atmosphere of his kingdom. And at once he suspended, as he suspected, the disappearance of the Lord. Foul means of livelihood implies deviation from one's occupational duty. There are prescribed duties for everyone, such as Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaisya, and Sudra. But anyone who do deviates from his prescribed duty and declares another's duty to be his own is following a foul and improper duty. A man becomes too greedy for wealth and power when he has no higher objective in life and when he thinks that this earthly life of a few years is all in all. Ignorance is the cause for all these anomalies in human society and to remove this ignorance, especially in the age of degradation, the powerful sun is there to distribute light in the shape of Srimad Bhagavatam. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. <clears throat> so this phrase is very nice. It says, the direction of eternal time had changed. <clears throat> and this was very fearful. So, there is regulation <coughs> in the material world. Why? Because there's a supreme personality of Godhead who's controlling everything. But when there's some type of disruption in the regulation, is it the Lord's fault? Hmm. We have to ask that question. Apparently, the disruptions is due to the degradation of human beings. Uh, that is, like for example, they're not being regulated in their uh, occupational duties that causes disruption. Why? Due to sinful reactions. And why are there sins? Due to ignorance. So, when people become greedy, very greedy, angry, and deceitful, and adopting foul means of livelihood, uh, so there are reactions to that. And those reactions cause more distress to the people. So, is it God's fault? No. It's the fact that people there's, they are not following their prescribed duties. And that has uh, reactions that are negative to the people themselves. So, what does a proper king do in a situation like that? That's the next question. Well, uh, somehow or other, he has to do something 
to bring people back to the proper path of following the rules and regulations of society. What are those rules and regulations? They are explained in the Varna Ashram, a system of social and uh, political organization of society. So the next verse gives us more information about this. It says, all ordinary transactions and dealings become polluted with cheating, even between friends and in familiar affairs or family affairs. There was always misunderstanding between fathers, mothers, and sons, between well-wishers and between brothers. Even between husband and wife, there's always strain and quarrel. So all these ordinary transactions and dealings become polluted with cheating, even between friends and even in family affairs. So this, these are all very bad signs of uh, the start of Kali Yuga. And uh, it says there, Maharaj Yudhisthira was astonished to experience even a slight change in the godly atmosphere of his kingdom. And at once, he suspected the disappearance of the Lord. <coughs> so there's a saying in English, when the cat's away, the mice will play. So as soon as Krishna disappears, <coughs> all of a sudden, all these negative things begin to appear. So therefore, the more we remember Krishna, the more we're inspired to follow the rules and regulations of spiritual life. And anything that makes us forget Krishna makes us lax in following those principles. Why do you follow rules and regulations? Well, the ultimate goal is to develop love for Krishna. And becoming lax in following the rules and regulations, you, re you retard or you destroy the possibility to reestablish our original relationship with Krishna. So everything in life is relational. We thrive through positive relationships with, with people. And the most possible positive relationship is our relationship with Krishna and, and Guru and Krishna. So when those relationships sour, our life sours. And the cause of that souring is, incre is forgetfulness of Krishna and increasing uh, greediness, lustiness, and, and, and then anger, fr frustration and anger and so forth. So, therefore it says, Jinma paryam vyava ritam satya misram chaso ridam pitrir matri suhit trir Dam patinam chakal kanam. So the all ordinary transactions and dealings became polluted with cheating. Even between friends. So these are ordinary transactions. And in familiar or family affairs, there was always misunderstanding between fathers, mothers, and sons, between well wishers and between brothers, even between husband and wife. There was always strain and quarrel. Ah, this is going on today. We see this all the time, unfortunately. Purports by Srila Prabhupada. A conditioned living being is endowed with four principles of malpractice, namely errors, insanity, inability, and cheating. Or, another way of saying that is uh, they make mistakes, they're easily illusioned, they have, uh, they have uh, imperfect senses, and they have a cheating propensity. So it's interesting how Prabhupada says, errors, insanity. So, so mistakes, illusion, which he equates with insanity, inability, meaning imperfect senses, and cheating. These are signs of imperfection. And out of the four propens out of the four, the propensity to cheat others is most prominent. Whoa. 
And this cheating practice is there in the conditional soul. And conditional soul, conditioned souls are primarily in the material world imbued with unnatural desire to lord it over the material world. A living being in his pure state is not conditioned by the laws because in his pure state he is conscious that a living being is eternally subservient to the supreme being. And thus, it is always good for him to remain subservient instead of falsely trying to lord it over the property of the Supreme Lord. In the conditioned state, the living being is not satisfied even if he actually becomes the lord of all that he surveys, which he never becomes. And therefore, he becomes the victim of all kinds of cheating, even with his nearest and most intimate relations. In such an unsatisfactory state of affairs, there is no harmony. And between father and sons, or between husband and wife. But all these contending difficulties can be mitigated by one process, and that is the devotional service of the Lord. The world of hypocrisy can be checked only by counteraction through devotional service to the Lord and nothing else. Maharaja Yudhisthira, having observed the disparities, conjectured the disappearance of the Lord from the earth. Guessed, in other words, that the Lord must have left the world. Otherwise, how can these things happen? So, this is going on today in a big way. Now, if we see, you know, there's riots in Seattle, there's riots in Portland, there are riots in New York, there are riots. It's not, not just protests, there are riots. Riots meaning people are doing illegal things like burning, killing, and uh, uh, destroying property, and uh, killing people, and maiming people and rioting against the government authority and police and so forth. So, do they have a right to do this? Well, they think they do because they think that the police and the government are no longer bona fide. And they're going back into history. They say, look, at the founding of this government, why did, they find, why did they start the United States of America? Because of what they considered was many, many injustices by the British colonial uh, government. You know, taxation without representation and uh, putting people in jail and not giving them any rights and so forth. They, there's a whole list of uh, uh, iniquities or violations of of what? Violations of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which they say are inalienable rights given to mankind by God. Well, there are a lot of misconceptions in those statements. Uh, do we have a right to life? Well, yeah, we have, we have an eternal soul that can't, that can't be changed. So uh, what do they mean by life? Actually, they mean the life of sense gratification. And then liberty. Well, how can you be free if you're born into delusion, overwhelmed by uh, desire and hate, and controlled by time and the modes of material nature and uh, lust, anger, and greed, and so forth. So none, nobody has real liberty. Uh, our liberty is very, very limited. Either we accept to follow Krishna's advice or we don't accept. That's our liberty. There's no other liberty beyond that. We don't have, and then the pursuit of happiness, that's not the goal of life. The goal of life is, is surrendering to the will of God, to Krishna, and engaging in devotional service. So the goal of life should be devotional service, pure devotional service to the Lord. 
and respect for all living entities, not only white people or black people or yellow people, but all people and all living entities, including the aquatics, the insects, the reptiles, the birds, the plants, and the mammals, and humans. So anything less than that is going to be some kind of deviation from one's occupational duty. So uh, the beginning of cheating is it happens when there's a desire for sense gratification. And you can see this in children. Does anyone teach a child to lie? No. But yet they do. Even at a very young age. And the mother says, did you do this? And the child says, no, I didn't do it. But they did do it. Say. So the, that cheating propensity is there in, in the living being. It's one of the faults four faults. Uh, we make mistakes, we're easily illusioned, our senses are imperfect, and we have a cheating propensity. So, what can we do? Well, the only thing you can do, the only thing that can remedy any of this, whether it's disharmony in family or society, whether it's uh, disparities in nature, like uh, winter lasts longer than it should or s spring lasts longer than it should etc all these different things just devotional service it's the only way to remedy these situations whether it's family situation societal situation or natural cataclysmic events it's only through devotional service so here Prabhupada says that a living being in his pure state is not conditioned by the laws of material nature because in his pure state he is conscious that a living being is eternally subservient to the supreme being and thus it is always good for him to remain subservient instead of falsely trying to lord it over the property of the supreme lord. So, uh, this, the Declaration of Independence says people have a right to life, liberty, and a pursuit of happiness. Those are misleading statements. It's not actually true. Although you could argue in one sense, well, you know, everyone should, no one should kill anyone, no one should put them in jail on, on, uh, uh, without uh, proper cause, etc. So that means that's the meaning of life. And liberty means that you know they have a right to defend themselves, and and the state cannot just make make accusations and put someone in jail, and uh, and uh, they have a right to uh, to live the way they want to. If they want to eat meat, you can't stop them from eating meat. If they want to take drugs, you can't stop them from taking drugs. You know, so you know they interpret that in, in that way. And then the pursuit of happiness, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, if someone gets their kicks out of life by smoking marijuana, then you can't stop them. You know, what, what, what right do you have to stop them? Or if they, if they enjoy drinking liquor, you can't stop them from that. You know, they like to have a cold beer, just like Obama when this one black professor uh, uh, got in a big fight with someone, not physically, but... Uh, verbal fight with a with, uh, uh, so-called uh, Republican. They invited them both to come to the White House to have a cold beer. <laughs> you see, that's, in other words, that's the, the, uh, the start of felicity, of uh, camaraderie by drinking a beer with each other. So all these things are nonsense. But we're living in a time of nonsense. So it says here that but all these contending difficulties can be mitigated by one process, and that is the devotional service of the Lord. The, the world of hypocrisy can be checked only by counteraction through devotional service to the Lord, and nothing else. Maharaj Yudhisthira, having obtained, observed the disparities, conjectured the disappearance of the Lord from the earth. So 
This devotional service to the Lord is very important because when you engage in devotional service to Krishna, first of all, you recognize that you're subordinate to the Lord. And the whole message of Bhagavatam is to convince us that we are subordinate to the Lord. That's the, that's the whole message of the Bhagavatam. If you, if you agree that you're subordinate to the Lord, then you should take the dictation of the Lord. Then you should engage in the service of the Lord. Then you understand that everything belongs to the Lord. You see. And there's no, no, no position in which you're outside of the purview of the Lord. So this is the ethos, the whole guiding principle of uh, you know, the devotee. Uh, and Prabhupada says, the devotional service of the Lord is the only process by which all problems of all classes of men can be resolved. This is ninth chapter, 33rd verse. So whatever he's saying here in, in the Bhagavatam, in this verse, in this purport, uh, it's also said in many other places by Srila Prabhupada. So 933 says, uh, Therefore, having come to this temporary, material, miserable world, engage in loving service unto me, Krishna says. And Prabhupada says, in this material world, there are classifications of people, but after all, this world is not a happy place for anyone. It is clearly stated here, anityam asukam lokam. This world is temporary and full of miseries, not habitable for any sen sane gentleman. This world is declared by the Supreme Personality of God to be temporary and full of miseries. Some philosophers, especially Mayavadi philosophers, say that this world is false, but we can understand from Bhagavad Gita that the, full, that the world is not false. It is temporary. There is a difference between temporary and false. This world is temporary, but there is another world which is eternal. This world is miserable, but the other world is eternal and blissful. Arjuna was born in a saintly royal family. To him also, the Lord says, take to my devotional service and come quickly back to Godhead, back home. No one should remain in this temporary world full as it is with miseries. Everyone should attach himself to the bosom of the Supreme Personality of Godhead so that he can be eternally happy. The devotional service of the Supreme Lord is the only process by which all problems of all classes of men can be solved. Everyone should therefore take the Krishna consciousness and make his life perfect. So there it is. The solution to all problems is devotional service. So instead of people rioting, burning down government buildings, uh, killing, breaking things, and so forth, they should all start chanting Hare Krishna Take prasadam to your full satisfaction and engage in all the nine types of devotional service. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, the most important verse two, and and so forth, the rest of them. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, remembering Lord Vishnu, and Padasavanam, surrendering to the uh, lotus feet of the Lord, or serving the lotus feet of the Lord. Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atman, Nivedanam. So, engaged in worship of the Lord, praying to the Lord, and becoming friends with the Lord, becoming the servant of the Lord, and surrendering everything to the Lord. So, this is what people should be doing. But instead of doing that, they're setting places on fire, they're breaking windows, they're screaming, Black Lives Matter, no justice, no peace, and blah, blah, blah. All nonsense stuff that will just create more problems rather than solve any problems. Just like uh, the communists uh, wanted to get rid of the czar. So they got rid of the czar, killed his whole family, wiped out the, the uh, Russian, uh, Russian uh, monarchy, which is based on uh, primogenitor, you know, uh, inheritance of power rather than democratically voting in power and political power. And then they established the communist so-called uh, 
a perfect society. And that turned out to be a complete failure. So then now they're doing a hybrid capitalist communist society. That's also going to be a failure. In the United States, they got rid of being under the yoke of the British monarchy and established a democratic uh, representative government. And that's a failure. So all these things are a failure because their goal is not devotional service. Their goal is serving their own sense gratification. That's what it means. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Although it sounds noble, it sounds reasonable, but actually it's misleading. It should be declaration of dependence on the mercy of God, not independence. And it should be all about engaging in the devotional service of the Lord, which is the panacea, the all-perfect uh, cure for all problems of life. So we'll stop right there. Are there any questions or comments? Okay, just repeat that again slowly and a little more loudly. Because uh, disappearance of Krishna or ignorance of Krishna is the cause of suffering. So, he could understand Krishna must have left, you know, his, his or must, must have uh, concluded his pastimes in the material world uh, because all these discrepancies started to appear. So that is the cause of trouble. Whenever a person forgets Krishna or a person is ignorant of Krishna, then trouble begins. So, how do you solve the problem? Well, the problem is forgetfulness of Krishna. The problem is ignorance of Krishna. So, you increase sankirtan, prasadam distribution, book distribution, and preaching to help people remember Krishna and follow Krishna's instructions and engage in devotional service, you see. So, the disappearance of Krishna is the same as being taught in school when you're like, you know, eight or ten years old, that we all come from monkeys. So that throws Krishna out the window. And the world was not created by God. It was created by a big bang. Ah. So now you don't have to think about Krishna. And, hey, look. You have to work hard, you have to get good grades, you have to go to college, you have to get this degree and that degree. Then you'll be a success and you can have plenty of sense gratification that's uh, sustainable. So, therefore, all of this is leading to forgetting Krishna. And when you forget Krishna, there's family problems, there's social problems, there are uh, uh, event problems like hurricanes and floods and and then there's pandemic problem, and there's this problem, and that problem. Husband and wife don't agree with each other, and they're arguing all the time. And You see? All due to forgetfulness of Krishna. So, you just hear knowing that uh, remembering Krishna always and following Krishna's instructions will lead to peace and prosperity for everyone. And as soon as there's a discrepancy... Uh, it means that either the Lord has ended his pastimes or people are forgetting the Lord due to ignorance. Yeah. We must not forget also that Yudhisthira Maharaj, the disciple Nada Muni, so he was full of knowledge. Yeah. He was the body, he didn't know exactly. The body knows perfectly well. No, but now you know, I know, all of us know. Whenever there's problems, a husband and wife are arguing, children are arguing with the parents, there is rioting in downtown Seattle, right? 
and there are there's the political craziness between Democrats and Republicans, and it's all due to forgetfulness of Krishna. You see, now you can put your finger on the problem, the real problem. You see, it's not, oh, uh, my husband, you know, he never puts the 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 lid on the toilet after he uses it. That's the problem. No, that's not the problem. <laughs> oh, he's always lusty. No, that's not the problem. That's a problem, but that's not the real problem. The problem is forgetfulness of Krishna. That's the problem. Right? So once you can put your finger on what the real cause of the problem is, now you can think about what the real solution is. Real solution? The devotional service of the Supreme Lord is the only process by which all problems of all classes of men can be solved. Men meaning men and women, right? All people. There it is. That's what we learned today. The cause of all problems. Right? So anytime there's a problem, we don't have to say, well, it's because of Trump. It's all his fault. You know, we have to get rid of him. And get Biden in there and he'll solve all the problems. No, he's not going to solve any problems. He has the same problem that Trump has. They both forget Krishna. They're not surrendered to Krishna. Are they engaged in devotional service? No. So how are they going to solve any problems? Are they going to inspire the people to engage in devotional service? No. Uh, they might say, go to church. You know, just like Obama. You know, he, he goes to church. He, he used to go to church. You know, all the presidents, they go to church. You know, at least once a month, or you know, make a show. They have a Bible in their hand, walking into the church. But, you know, well, maybe that's better. You know, than not walking into the church. Of course, at least it's something. But are they actually engaged in devotional service? No, they're not. They're still eating meat. They still enjoy gambling. They still enjoy illicit activities, and they still enjoy intoxication. Although Trump doesn't smoke and drink, by the way. Did you know that? Well, he likes to eat meat. <laughs> yeah. And other things. Yeah. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Yes. Yes, ma'am. So we can see really this message about it and so clear. Why it doesn't reach out? Those people, even, even a little bit, you know, to understand, you know, it's very black and white, as you can see them, forgetful people. Why this message doesn't reach them? And here they have a big, big platform, the United Nations, those and that, but this message doesn't get there at all. Well, it's our fault. It's not, not, it's not their fault. It's our fault. We're not preaching enough. That's true. Yeah. All right? To get out there more. Preach to the people. Explain to them. Look, we got the solution. Here it is. Chant Hare Krishna. Learn how to engage. Forget about you come from a monkey. Everything started by a big bang. And sense gratification is the, is the goal of life. That's all nonsense. It's all misinformation. It's all causing the suffering in the first place. I think the enemies of people are the science, scientists. And philosophers. They're the new priests in modern times, scientists and philosophers. Yeah. Like Marx was a philosopher. He came up with a whole theory, economic theory, and, and it's all nonsense. Right? And even, even and I'm writing a book now on the, on the Declaration of Independence, it's misleading. It sounds good, but it's misleading. The whole purpose is political, to get rid of the British and start a new government. And, and the new government is making the same mistake as the old government. Okay, we'll stop there. Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada.